Hey dudes, I'm Channel Master Jake, and I know I am late, like I always am, but today I'm going to be doing a review of Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, and uh, yeah, um, I really, really like this movie, I've got to say, I've seen the first Jumanji, and I really enjoyed the first Jumanji, I liked the setup with the cursed board game, the kids, like little Kristen Dunst and stuff, they were kind of annoying, but uh, Bonnie Hunt was okay, and Robin Williams was a lot of fun. And just the idea of a board game coming to life and trying to kill you, that, that was just a really fun idea. I, I just, I love that sort of creativity. Pretty sure it's based off of a book, though, so, eh. So when I went in to watch Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle, I actually went into it with high hopes. I was expecting it to be fun, silly, action-packed. I wasn't going in for a deep character study or a heavy-hitting drama or some sort of historical fiction or something. I kind of figured I was going to get something fun, something lighthearted, and the movie delivers on that front. It is everything I thought it would be, and even a little bit more, actually. It, it, it was great. I love it. So just to get over the really basics of the plot, there's this board game called Jumanji. And it's a cursed board game. You play it and it tries to kill you by making stuff that happens in the game come to life around you. The only way to beat it is to beat the game. You have to, you have to win it. You have to finish it. And it's done. But uh, when the first movie ended, I think it was like 93 or 94 or something, it doesn't pick up again until this movie begins in 1996 when the board game discovers that video games have come into the scene and no one plays board games anymore. So this is what I thought was really clever. The board game, because it's cursed, it literally rewrites itself into a video game. And it changes up its, its, some of its rules and how it's played, but it still keeps like the same sort of ideas that it has where you have to finish it to win it. And a kid plays it, gets sucked into it, we never see him again. Flash forward now to 2017 and there's, um, there's four stereotypes that are going to school. You got the... Uh, the nerdy kid, you got the jock, you got the pretty girl, you got the awkward girl. And for different reasons, they all end up getting detention. They all have to stay on Saturday at the school to clean up some, some weird magazine thing. I don't remember, to be honest. But, but then they accidentally find the game, which I guess the kid's dad in 96 donated after his son mysteriously disappeared. Ugh. But after that, they play it, get sucked in, and become the avatars that they chose at the beginning of the game, and now they have to finish the game in order to get out and go home. It is a riot, for starters. The movie is really, really funny. Especially because you got the characters that are playing kind of different stereotypes than what they normally do. So the nerdy kid becomes Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Hilarious. But it's still the nerdy kid's head in Dwayne The Rock Johnson's body. So he's not going around going like, Yeah, look how strong I am! He's all like, I don't want to do this, guys. And it's big old huge Dwayne The Rock Johnson going, Ugh. You better get in there and save her. I'm not going to get in there. You get in there. Which is, I don't know, it's hilarious to me. And then the, the preppy, obnoxious girl becomes Jack Black. And for the entire time, he's doing like a, a sassy feminine walk in high voice. And it is funny. By the way, yes, with having a girl in a male avatar's body, you think that there would be a little bit of, um, private part confusion. And they actually do address it. And uh, they, they don't dwell on long, but they still make two pretty funny jokes about it. And, you know, it's... Normally they wouldn't be touched on. I like the fact that it was touched on at least just a little bit. <laughs> touched on. And yeah, the, the, the awkward girl in the female heroine's body was a lot of fun because it helped her kind of gain some confidence. And then having the jock in little tiny Kevin Hart, oh, that was that was hilarious. Just because of the fact that he's used to being able to do everything, and now that he's in tiny Kevin Hart, he can barely do anything. In fact, of fact, compared to all the other characters, he's probably the worst. Just because the only thing he can really do that no one else can do is he can, um, he holds stuff in his backpack. You don't get in water with a backpack, everybody knows that. Which, okay. <laughs> As a video game character goes, he's kind of the lamest. Even the Jack Black character is the only one that can read the map. So if you were to choose the Jack Black avatar, he'd still be able to do stuff. And by the way, I know that I'm saying the actor's names instead of the character names, because they each had really kind of long, weird, kind of silly, punny names, and I just don't remember all of them. 
it just, it just kind of escapes me. So yeah, the movie was really, really funny. Another thing the movie had was a lot of really good action scenes. And every sort of conceivable sort of problem you could come up with is easily explained by the premise of the movie. Ah, you, you can't expect to fall from the sky and live. Video game! You can't expect to go and get eaten by a hippopotamus and come alive or go surfing from a helicopter with the rhinos. Video game! Every sort of problem that you could come up with is not only explained just because of the fact that they're in a video game. All sort of logic just falls out the door at that point. Anything can happen, anything at all, which makes it really, really cool. I like that. Even the problem that you could say with, like, the bad guy is very bland and just, uh, video game. It's, it, it's just, it covers everything. Any sort of potential problems or pitfalls you could have with this scenario, at least in terms of the game world, it, it's just automatically fixed because, like I said, video game. Okay, so is there anything that I didn't like about the movie? There is just, like, maybe one thing, and that's that it's actually kind of predictable. Like, I, I figured out exactly, pretty much exactly what it was going to be doing the entirety of the way. Like, even even those jokes with um, Jack Black with the, being the girl and the male avatar, I wondered if they would touch on that. I didn't think they would, but they did. But I still thought that'd be kind of funny if they did. Pretty much everything I figured would happen would happen. I kind of wish they would shake it up a little bit, to be honest. I mean, um, there's only like one thing that they did that they kind of shook it up. I'm not going to say what it was. It's a spoiler. It happens towards the end. But it's very reminiscent of the first movie. And, um, yeah, so if you've seen the first movie, you can even kind of figure that out if you, if you really want to kind of just kind of think on it for a little bit. So I really wish they had thrown a few more curveballs, maybe tried something a, a little more differently. Because the stuff with the kids outside of school is like a little too perfect, happy ending sort of deal. I was, I don't know, I was, maybe, I was wishing for something maybe a little more interesting to happen. But no, it's just a way that it ended up happening, which it's not bad. It was still a really enjoyable movie. Maybe it's just I'm just a little spoiled with some really good TV shows and movies that have been coming out lately. And I'm like, that'd be cool if they could throw in like a, a wrench that no one sees coming at all. But no, it, it's Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. It follows all the steps you think it's going to follow. By the way, before I forget, the little uh, nods they have to the original Jumanji were really cool. They weren't in your face, and there's only like maybe one or two of them. But they worked, and you really go, oh, that's, that's actually really cool to see. Like, it's still, you know, the first movie still did happen. It's still saying that it totally took place. It's just doing something different with it, and I like that. That's how you do, like, a continuation or a reboot right. You don't completely rewrite what happens. <clears throat> Ghostbusters. <clears throat> and instead, you try to build off of it and do something different. So, yeah, all in all, it was a really fun movie. I went with my siblings. We were laughing loudly the entire time with pretty much everyone else in the audience. It was actually pretty full there. So, yeah, really funny, great action Great character acting, primarily by the four when they're their avatars, you know, the main actors. Those guys kill it. The kids, a little less so, but I mean, they're younger. They got room to grow. You know, wasn't expecting anything phenomenal from them anyway. So yeah, I know it's late. Like, I'm always late when it comes to reviewing anything. But, uh, but yeah, it's just, it's just the way it works with my current schedule, you know. I do it when I can. I can right now, so I'm, I'm doing it. Yeah. So I have been Channel Master Jake, and I'll see you dudes next time. Make sure to hug someone you love today. Bye. Hey guys, so I forgot to mention that I would rate this movie, you know, give an actual rating because it says review. I would rate four Smolder Bravestones out of five. Watch it, it's a really fun movie. It's even better than Star Wars or so I've heard. Uh, make sure to like the video if you liked it, follow me on social media if you want, and I'll see you dudes in the next video. Bye.